Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you are smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Please, tell them. Anyway, like my previous episodes, I'll be doing my best with the pronunciations here. I relied on Google Translate to provide them, and I created my own phonetic phonetic spellings to help me do my best. I can't even pronounce English. All right, I'll definitely stumble a bit, but it should sound correct. I'll put the actual words in the lower third. All right, this is the fifth of my series of reviews of seven free wine samples, also known as the penultimate, because the next episode is gonna be two wines. Uh, anyway, from the Alentejo region of Portugal. I can say that it's been a lot of fun doing the research so far on these wines. The research from Episode 24, the last one, was especially interesting and took a long time finding some things. But we're not here to talk about that wine. We're here to talk about this wine from Carmim. First, the name. It's an acronym of Cooperativa Agricola de Higengos de Monserraz. It was created in 1971 by a group of 60 wine growers aiming to produce and sell wine from the grapes of a group of wine growers from the region. This co-op has 900 members with 3,600 hectares of vineyards. In addition to wine, they produce olive oil. Actually, almost every winery in the series produces olive oil. Olive trees and vineyards tend to mirror each other as far as sharing favorable growing conditions. Their entire line of wines, number 74, spread across multiple brands. In addition to olive oil, they also produce brandy. Another product a few of the other wineries I've already done also produce. Carmine is the largest winery in Alentejo. They have separate wineries for each region and one for their DOC wines. They export to 34 countries. As far as other information, I'll let you explore it on their website, which I've linked in the description below. As far as this brand, it appears to be their flagship brand. So Hagengos is the subregion of Alentejo. The name is associated with the word king. Hey is the Portuguese word for king, but both words are derived from the Latin rex regis. The website describes the brand as such. This brand stems from the land from which it received its name, Hagengos the land of wine, and the largest subregion of Alentejo in terms of area consecrated to vineyards. Hegangos or Helengo, land whose lord was the king himself. Now, there are seven total wines from this brand, with this one being its top bottling. Gajafeira means wine cellar, but its use on a label has a legal definition in Portugal. It refers to it being a reserver wine. Red wines must be aged at least 30 months total with at least 12 months in the bottle. The rest means two partners, so this is the seller of two partners. I'm sure there's a story behind it, but I couldn't find it. Here are the stats for the wine. The 2014 Carmim Hagengos Gajafeira dos Socios. It is part of the Alentejo DOP. It is 65% Alicante Boucher, 20% Toriga Nacional, and then 15% Tinta Callada. I'll get to this in a bit. Manual harvesting is aged for 14 months in new and used French and American oak. Bottle aged for at least one year. It is 14.5% ABV. Total acidity is 5.7 grams per liter. pH is 3.69. Its residual sugar is listed as less than 4 grams per liter. And the SO2 is 95 milligrams per liter or 95 ppm. All right, just a couple notes. You'll see wineries and even me use both DOP and DOC. DOP is the official term but DOC is also allowed due to its historical use. This is throughout all of the EU where there's an official appellation term and then there's a local term. The text sheet has two different aging statements. Besides what I list here, it also says the oak aging is between eight to 18 months. Considering the legal definition of gajafeira, I'm going to say that it's probably 18 months in oak and 12 months in bottle, or it's 14 months in oak and 16 in bottle, or some other combination that gets it to 30 months. Either that or they are allowed to shorten the aging for some reason. Wine laws are sometimes flexible in many countries. All right, so Tinta Callada is also known as Pareleta in Spain. 
basically a blending grape. I'm sure I've seen it on a label somewhere, but I really don't remember anything about it. That's all there is to say about that grape. So let's get into the wine. All right, are you having fun watching me stumble over these Portuguese pronunciations? I'm having fun saying them. I'm starting to sound like a native, right? No, not really. Look at that, it's just getting kind of brown. This is a 2014, by the way, right? And I, you probably can't see it on the video, but it's gonna it's gonna get that that reddish brown um, color to it. I right, remember when the remember the couple episodes ago. I didn't I didn't have to like tighten it too much, but when you do a little twisting and you try to pull it out, make sure you tighten the needle back up, or else you're gonna get like leaking. All right. So yeah, um, I know I haven't really talked about the color on all the other ones because it's just like it's like deep ruby and it kind of stays all the way, but it's got a a, a deep kind of um, browner like brown red in the middle. It's like a deep like darker like a brownish ruby, but when you on the edge it gets to a little bit browner. Maybe I should have more overhead stuff when I can do like the the color. You can see that. I might try that. This wine smells legit. So the fruit isn't so ripe on the nose. Like it's it's like drying out. It's like it's like ripe, but it's not like the, the other ones that I've been reviewing that's kind of like a really ripe or sometimes overripe. I mean, I still get the raspberry. It's more red and black fruit rather than blue fruit dominant. So maybe with the extra bit of age, the blue fruit's dropping out and the red and black fruit's becoming more dominant. But blackberry, raspberry. Black raspberry, a little bit of blueberry in there, a little potting soil, fresh tilled earth. I'm also getting a, a little bit of forest floor, but not a whole lot. So this is those secondary and tertiary flavor uh, aromas coming through, the aging process, the oxidation coming through. I wouldn't say there's any mushroomy, but I bet you if we age this wine two or three more years, you'll start getting some of that mushroom aspect. You get some clove, cinnamon. I don't get a ton of vanilla, but it's kind of more of a vanilla bean, not like vanilla extract. It's really faint though. A bit of fern, coffee, like like the roasted like roasted coffee, or just like a roasted malt. Let's check it out. There's a reason why I did this last of the whole group. I mean, price-wise. I made kind of association that the, the least expensive wines will be the most quaffable and then like the, not the lowest quality, but more of an entry level. And when we get to this one, which is $48, that it's going to be the quote best wine or, or it's implied it's the best wine. And I think it is. I think it's the best of the group that I have. There's an integration. There's a, 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 a really good balance. All the other wines have a balance to them, but they're really fruit dominant. Even the last wine before this one was approaching that good balance. I didn't really mention it, but it was approaching that balance. I said it was a smoothness and elegance if I remember correctly on it. But this one has like this kind of a balance, like, like there's effort, additional effort put into really it's like trying to make the best wine you're gonna be able to make, at least from this brand's perspective. The fruit's a little more dried out, so you get kind of a, not quite a dried cranberry, but you get a little bit of a drier raspberry, a little bit of drier blueberry, blackberry. It's also much more tannic. Like, it's really attacking the gums. It's really drying the mouth out. It's finishing off as a drier wine. You still get a lusciousness, your, your mouth's still watering. You know, uh, I forgot what the pH was on this thing. So yeah, I mean, the pH is right in the sweet spot. The total city is 5.7 grams per liter. It's not a high acid wine by any means. Matter of fact, next episode, we're gonna, I think I'm touching it on acidity and pH and all that. I may not, I, I know in my original notes, I was gonna go through that, but I may have taken it all out because it's, I might, I don't know, anyway. But my mouth is really watery. But it's also like the tannin, I think is really drying out on my mouth. 
I mean, it's a delicious wine. And it's the most old world tasting of the group I've done so far. The others are like a lot more approachable in an international style, which is totally fine. There's lots of European areas that are, that are making a quote international style that's more fruit forward. I think that, you know, the oxidation is coming through a little bit. It's almost a little poopy. Almost a little funk to it. Like a, like an old, like a, a Bordeaux that's got a little bit of age. And that roasted coffee bean or the roasted malt type of thing. You got the smell of the roast, right? Dried leaves. Forest floor. Okay, not not necessarily mushroom, but I mean, I see it going in that direction pretty soon. I mean, it's a fifty dollar, well, forty dollar bottle of wine, and it, it kind of reminds me more of something like you'd get from Bordeaux or something like a Reserva or Grand Reserva Rioja. It's not as dusty as Rioja. It's not as dried out as like dry dry fruit and all that kind of stuff is as Rioja. But this is. This is spectacular wine. Wow. That's something, this is something I would bring to tasting group as a bonus wine. Like, hey guys, you gotta try this wine. I'll probably end up drinking it because I have all these other wines I would make bonus wines, but yeah, get the wine. Just if you find it. If you can if you can afford $48 or around that price, absolutely get it. All right. So that's today's show. Again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And then tell your friends. Until next time, see you later.